We're going to say edit this one. And we're going to say that this is going to be so then I, I also often will abbreviate this, which is kind of ugly, but accumulated depreciation is so long that it's easier to just say like a Q ACC Depre and then uh, fixed assets. Now, some would argue you don't even need to say accumulated depreciation if you make it a sub account of the of the other fixed asset account. But I like to have it in there because it's easier for me to do the journal entries. Otherwise, you've got multiple accounts with the same name that just are called accumulated depreciation, which isn't helpful. And you're going to have to change the name anyways, because QuickBooks won't let you have two accounts with the same name. But we're going to put it under furniture and fixture. So there it is. And let's check that out. So let's save that and change in the type. Okay, that's okay. Uh, boom and see if I can find it now. It took me back to the right place this time. That's good. So now it's a sub account. Let's take a look at it on the balance sheet. So if I run it, so now we can see it works out pretty nice this way because then the parent account also notice that if I made a separate sub account called furniture and fixture, and then I made two, if I made a separate parent account called furniture and fixture, and then two accounts underneath it, called accumulated depreciation and cost, then the accumulated depreciation ends up being on top of the cost due to the fact of alphabetical order, right? So this way actually works pretty nice because now the furniture and fixture is on top, right? even though the, the, the accumulated depreciation starts with an A. So we have this and, and you also eliminate one extra line Otherwise, there would be one extra line. So you're, you're also making your financials a little bit shorter doing that. So this is the cost. This is the accumulated depreciation for it. And this is the book value, which is great. So I'm going to do the same format for the machinery and equipment, although there is no accumulated depreciation yet posted, but we will have it when we do the adjusting entries in a future course or section. So let's get ready for that now. So I'm going to do the same thing for the uh the machinery and equipment don't day for the deals for crying out loud meals this is my spanglish it's half spanish half english deals meals deals for crying out loud meals i okay i'm gonna make another so what i'll do here is i'm gonna make another one and i'm gonna say this is gonna be uh a uh a fixed asset type of account. So it's an asset. And then we're going to make it under the fixed assets under machinery and equipment. And so I'm going to call it machinery and equipment dude. And then we're going to say here, I'm just going to say ACC D pre machinery and equipment. I just think it sounds cool too. ACC D pre sounds better than accumulated depreciation. It's the ACC Depre. That's what we're talking about here. Let's run it. And so there we have it. And so if I scroll down, we've got the furniture and equipment and then these subcategories there as well. So that's going to be the general idea. If I go back to the balance sheet, we run it again. Then we've got these nice subcategories. Nothing new happened here because there's nothing in the subcategory yet. But when I post to it, as we will do in a future course or section in the adjusting entries, then we'll have this drop down for each of them. So now I'll be able to show total fixed assets and then each fixed asset category in terms of the cost as well as the accumulated depreciation and the book value per category or I can collapse each category showing just the book value uh, per category. So pretty fancy uh, on that. So that looks good. All right. And we'll also, when we do that, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do our adjusting entry with this form over here. Okay, let's see where we stand in our trial balance. Let's go to the trustee TB, run it. We haven't done much new except for that one recategorization of the fixed assets. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, try doing a date range change and see if that is the issue. We've got the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets. These are all assets, cash, <coughs> accounts receivable, inventory, investment, payments to deposit, prepaid insurance, the fixed assets, the accumulated depreciation, contra asset tied intimately to the fixed asset, 
we basically took the fixed asset account and broke it into two halves. So these, that's why we get a contra account because it's part of another account. It doesn't really stand on its own leg. It's, it's just one leg or the other. Anyway, machinery. And then we have, those are what the, the company has in terms of dollars, not in terms of units. Then we have the other side of the coin. Who has claim to the to value of the assets? We have then the liabilities and the equity. First liabilities, like the accounts payable, the visa, the state with the sales tax, the government with, I mean, sorry, the bank with the loans, and then the government again with the payroll taxes, and then unearned revenue. If we got some kind of deposit that we have not yet earned, and then our portion as owners, owner's equity, such as the investment, similar to the capital, or I'm sorry, common stock, if we were a corporation, and then the owner's equity, similar to retained earnings, and then the whole income statement, giving us detail about one year uh, of information, typically for QuickBooks. And if we take the credits, which are income, minus the debits, which are expenses, we should get a net credit balance, net income, that could be thought of as part of the owner's equity, or retained earnings if a corporation, QuickBooks doing that closing process for us on a yearly basis, we can see if we bring it up one more year, 010125, 010125, run it, the whole income statement gets smushed together in owner's equity, the odometer of the income statement being reset at zero for the next trip starting in the next year, all income accounts, the temporary accounts of income accounts, then resetting starting over owner's equity, similar to the retained earnings representing the odometer that's not being reset because it is the total distance that has been tracked in terms of one lump sum number over the life of the corporation, net income over the life of the corporation less the amount that has been distributed out in the form of draws if a sole proprietorship, dividends if it was a corporation.